Hello everybody, MTG Foil Guy here. Today we're going to be going over how I submit my cards to BGS or Beckett Grading Services in order to have them graded and encapsulated and successfully sent back to me. So this video uh, uh, applies in particular to Canadian citizens. Um, as those are the ones that asked me and being Canadian myself, I obviously have the experience. Although I imagine it will apply to most international uh, orders as well. However, I don't know how your custom services are as well as your um, mailing systems. So I do want to throw that Canadian kind of curtail in there. So what we're going to be going over in today's video is we're going to be talking about how to get yourself logged into the BGS website itself, how to sign up. We're also going to show you some of the things that you can do on the BGS website such as creating a registry, uh, your population report, showing you what the population report sort of entails, how to sort of navigate around it. And then we're also going to be going over the BGS form itself, how to fill it out. Um, I'm going to be going over some tips and tricks I do with it. And then finally, sort of how to package your cards, what to package them in, and what to actually do when you're at the post office and how to properly mail them, you know, with customs and, and that sort of stuff. So without further ado, let's go right into our first topic of today, and that is the BGS website itself. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it up here. And as you can see on screen, this is what the BGS Beckett website looks like. So the first thing you'll notice, you can follow along with my mouse here, is you have the option to either sign up if you're creating a new account, which for the purposes of this video we're going to assume you are, or once you've created that account you can go ahead and log in. So we're going to go ahead and click this little sign up feature here. And as you can see it's pretty straightforward. It's going to ask you to create a username, it's going to ask you for an email address, um, it's going to ask you for a password, as you can see I have my stuff saved, and it's going to ask you to confirm the password. Ask you for a phone number as well, but that's optional, and then it's going to certify that you're not a robot. Um, this is basic stuff. I mean, anybody and their mother, I'm sure you guys have signed up for some sort of website before, so this is pretty straightforward. Now, once you are signed up, um, some of the cool things you can then do is we're going to go right over to our next tab here, and this is the BGS registry. So, um, as you can see, I've created one. I collect a beta, kind of partially collect a beta, a beta set. So it's got some cool little facts here. As you can see, um, number of possible cards in your registry be 302, which is the number of cards in the beta set. Um, highest attainable point total is 3050.2. That's assuming everything is a quad 10. Um, stackable, yes, and the registry owner, which is myself. So here's my specific stats over here. Again, follow along with my mouse. You can see total points. I've amassed 383.6 total points out of the 3,050.2 total possible. I have 40 cards in my registry, uh, which gives me a 13.25% completed uh, percentage. And an average GPA, and this is the one that I strive for the most myself, is an average GPA of 9.59. That means on average, Every single card in here is a quad or better. Um, obviously, 9.6 is a quad. So just, just about every single card in here on average is a quad grading. Uh, and then my overall rank is I'm 11th out of 39. So again, for me, the one I care about the most is the average GPA there. So you can see we scroll down. You can see some of the cards I have in my registry here. Air Elemental. Air Elemental, sorry. And you have the option of you can add images if you want. If you want to add some scans to your BGS registry. There we go, there's a quad ancestral recall. Um, we'll scroll down to the bottom here just so you can see. If we scroll over, this is what I'm talking about here for the points. So the air elemental, because it's a basic 9.5, that means it's 395 subs with uh, with one 9 subcategory, in this particular case corners, you can see it scores a 9.5 for points. But if we go down to our ancestral recall here, it's all 9.5s with a 10 surface, so it's a quad plus. Therefore, it has a scoring of 9.6. In a video to come, I'm going to be getting into more detail about how that works and why quads are um, usually more desirable. Um, but for the purposes of this video here today, we're not going to get into that. So this is one of the cool things you can do once you have your sign up. Like I said, you can go ahead and you can create a registry. Um, and then, like I said, here's just the example of mine. Some of the other cool things you can do on the website itself is... This right here is the population report. So in this particular case here, all I did was I typed in beta mocks to pull up all the moxes, um, specifically to beta. So as you can see for the mox emerald, out of 122 total mox emeralds that have been graded, so just highlighted it there, 15 have achieved a score of 9.5. So you do the math on that, it's pretty hard to get a mox emerald 9.5. 
As you can see, another example here, Mox Jet, out of 117 total, there's 23 9.5s and only 110. Scroll on down, you get the idea there. So that's pretty cool to look at. Now you can take it a step further here, and on this particular case, I've pulled up the Mox Emerald population report. So as you can see, this is every single Mox Emerald that has been submitted for grading. We'll scroll up to the top here. I wish the subcategories um, uh, were like freeze pane, you know, kind of in Excel, and you could you could scroll down with them. Unfortunately, you can't. It is what it is. But as you can see, it gives you center grade, corner, surface, edges, final grade, and then you could go back to the view pop report, which is just that tab we were. Um, just on moments before this. So this is every single Mox Emerald that has ever been graded. So what was our number again? 122. So this is all 122 Mox Emeralds here. It tells you all their grades. You can see by clicking on the little um, um, BGS Beckett uh, serial number, you can see when the card was submitted for grading. So obviously the older the serial number, the older the card was when it was submitted for grading. We can see we can scroll down this fine specimen right here is actually I currently own this one so that's that's my baby right there and you can scroll all the way down to the bottom here and we can see the last one that was submitted let's go ahead and let's click on that it may give me problems because I'm not logged in yep and we can see shoot let's go back to that let's go back again now that we're logged in and there we go and we can see that this one was submitted March 6 2017 nine centering a corner 75 edge 75 surface overall final grade of 7.5 so just some cool stuff you can do on the Beckett website um, I got one more tab here and we'll get to that in a second okay so yeah so just, just some cool stuff you can see on the Beckett website itself so I definitely encourage you to log in as you can see we're, we're logged in now um, it's it's free it's free to sign up so there's really no reason why you wouldn't um, log in or sign up so definitely encourage you to go ahead and do that next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the BGS form itself and we're gonna kind of get into how to fill that out so we're gonna get back to that last tab a little bit later on in the show but for right here right now let's go to our BGS Beckett submission form so you can see we're gonna go ahead and pull it up on screen I also have a hard copy here in front of me as well. Um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over, and you won't be able to see my mouse on this portion, but that's all right. What we're going to do is we're just going to go over how to fill it in. So you'll see right at the very top there, focus a little bit, there we go. Um, right at the very top there, you start off with your name. That's pretty simple. You fill in your name, your first and your last name. Your account number, now this is important. You're not going to have this information, nor will you ever fill it out. I always just leave that blank. Um, that's more for Beckett's use themselves. They'll have your account number. They know who you are. Okay, let's go right over to the left. Ship to, please print, uh, please print clearly. Same thing, you're going to reprint your name, and you're going to print the address in which it's going to ship back to you. So, what I mean by this is, if you're shipping to your cards back to, say, your business, you put your business address here. If you're shipping them back to your home personal address, then you put your home personal address here. Okay? It's where you're putting the address where Beckett will ship the cards back to. So it's important to note. Please check one. Is it residential or is it a business address? Pretty, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Your city. Now your state. Obviously for us Canadians, we have provinces. We don't have states. So I just write in my case, Ontario. Same thing with zip. We don't have zip. We have a postal code. So I just go ahead and write my postal code there. I leave zip. I don't cross it out or anything. I just write my postal code. Your phone number, self-explanatory. Your email, self-explanatory. Use the email that you use to sign up on the Beckett graded website. So make sure you use that same email, okay? Uh, and that'll be the email you use there. Scrolling over to the right, we have ship via priority overnight, two-day, express saver, ground, my FedEx account number, or international shipping. We're obviously international shipping. So please note with this, um, <clears throat> the two options I've encountered when I've shipped out cards is... If you do international shipping, it's going to come back USPS. You don't have a choice. That's just how it's going to go, okay? Um, USPS, in my experience, is anywhere from six to eight business days. It is what it is, and that's where the nervousness of guys sending their cards out comes in, and I, I for one, completely understand. One of the workarounds around this is they will ship back FedEx, but they will only ship back FedEx if you have a business account number. 
So if you have permission from your work or you own your own business, whatever, then you can have it shipped back via your FedEx account number and they'll bill, they'll bill that FedEx account number. Otherwise, um, they will only ship it back USPS. I've had many arguments with them over this and when we get into uh, another forum a little bit later on in the video, I'll show you exactly what I mean. But just keep that in mind. For us Canadian guys, we can only do international shipping, which is USPS, United States Postal Service. Or you can do a FedEx only if you have a business FedEx account number, i.e. they can just charge your FedEx account number. Um, moving on, we have Beckett use only, so we're not going to go ahead and fill this out. Now we get into the nitty gritty part. We get into where we're going to put our cards. So um, normally what I do for this, and this is the tip and trick I'm going to show you, is you can go ahead and fill this out. But I actually do an Excel spreadsheet and I put the information on that instead. So what I do is I usually put in big giant letters in this portion here um, C attached spreadsheet and I make sure to fill up uh, all 13 square all 13 square of that box there again I put C attached spreadsheet and to be honest I just leave that blank <clears throat> now scrolling on down below we have two boxes that we can check here the first box says that your cards will only be authenticated. They will not receive a numeric grade and they'll be placed into a Beckett holder and labeled as authentic. That's what that blue authentic labeling. Um, <clears throat> we obviously don't want that. We want our cards graded. Well, let's see here, I have just an example. We want our cards to look something like this, right? We want the numerical grade. So therefore, we're not gonna check the first box, but we are gonna go ahead and check the second box on the sheet there that says, by checking this box, <clears throat> your cards will be given a numeric grade if possible, but if the cards are deemed to be altered, trimmed, recolored, inking, which is big for magic, a lot of magic cards get inked, especially the older ones, we will seal and authenticate the card in a Beckett authentic altered case, i.e. they'll just do the first, they'll do the first uh, check mark there. Standard grading fees will apply for either of the services listed above, no problem. Then we go down to our grading service guarantee. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Do you want your cards graded in two days, five days, 10 days, 20 days, or 45 days? And then you apply it by whether it's one to 12 cards, 13 to 30 cards, 31 to 99, or 100 plus cards. Something that's important to note is grading does not begin the day Beckett receives your cards. So in other words, um, if you do the two day service, if you mail your cards out on Tuesday, they get there on Wednesday, your cards will not receive their grade until Friday. So it's Thursday, Friday, and that's what they consider the two days, not the day that they receive your cards. So please keep that in mind when you're, <clears throat> excuse me, please keep this in mind when you're doing that. Then we're going to go over and calculate money to be paid to BGS. So pretty, pretty simple. Um, total number of cards. So you put your number there. Grading fee per card depends on your grading service you selected that we just discussed. Multiply line two by line one for subtotal. Seems easy enough. Add two dollars for each certified autograph card. Well, um, I don't typically deal with that. I don't. I don't buy cards that are signed. If you do, then fill that out accordingly. Oversized item surcharge. Magic cards aren't oversized, so that's a non-issue. We'll add twelve dollars for each magazine or program. Again, we're doing magic cards. We don't do that. Return insurance. Now, this is something here. I'm not going to show you the back of the sheet on the page, but I want you to know that I do have it here in my hands. This is return insurance, and it is, which one is it? It is this one right here, international insurance orders. See if we can get that just so you guys can sort of see it there a little bit. International orders only, global express mail. There we go, insurance, $1.25 for every $100 worth of insurance, all fees are listed in U.S. funds. That's a lot of money. So for some of my cards, like for example, I have a really nice time walk. I'm looking at $500 of insurance just for that one card. I personally do not do insurance. Um, I usually, I always ne neglect to do that option. I am not going to tell you what to do. Um, you need to make your own judgment call on that. I'm just telling you I personally do not do insurance. However, that's a decision you need to make yourself. Um, just be aware that it's pretty expensive. So that's pretty much the sheet. Then we're just going to go ahead and sign it at the bottom, date at the bottom, payment options. You put your credit card, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discovery, your card number, your expiry date, your name, and your signature again. If you have a promotional code, you put it there. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy sheet to do. Now, getting back to the middle part here, which we kind of glossed over because I told you I had a trick for that. I put in there, if you remember, in big bold letters, C attached spreadsheet. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull up that spreadsheet right now. 
okay? And let's go ahead and get rid of that and pull up our spreadsheet, okay? Now, my face is kind of in a little way a little bit, but trust me, you're not missing anything there. So, this is what my spreadsheet looks like. I've obviously, you know, took some stuff out for the purposes of this video, but you get the idea. Right off the bat, quantity, one, and you'll notice it's the exact same information that's on this sheet rather than just hand write it out. It's a lot easier for me to do my Excel spreadsheet. So, quantity, one, year, 1993, because in this particular case, I've got some beta cards. Sport, MTG, serial number, if you're doing the regrade game, let me grab another one here. In fact, I just happen to have this right on top. This is my Mox Emerald. You can see under the 9.5, it says 77. That's a little blurry. 7720618. Yep, 7720618. That is the serial number. So if I was doing the regrade game, I would type that in. 7720618. Card. Well, my card is the Mox Emerald. Declared value. We just talked about that. I said I personally don't do the uh, the declared value. Uh, service. In this case, two-day grading submission I don't like my cards out of my hand for very long and again that two-day grading sub submission is found right here it's the, all we're doing is telling all we're doing is telling them which service out of here we want for our mox emerald two-day grading submission plus I like to get my cases redone plus case redone okay perfect um, next card we're gonna go ahead and let's say we've got an ungraded one so, you know, this would be your typical one here. I've got the Prodigal Sorcerer. I want to make sure I didn't butcher that. So this is an ungraded one. I've just got it in a penny sleeve right now. So we're going to go ahead and same thing. Quantity, one, year, 1993. MTG, serial number. No, it doesn't have a serial number in this case. Beta, card, Prodigal Sorcerer. Declared value, again, zero. Just gonna go ahead and say two day grading submission, except obviously the case is not being done. Just two day grading submission. You get the idea, rinse and repeat all the way down till you got all the cards you wanna submit. And then I've got here, postage. I would like these cards to be shipped back. FedEx International Priority. Something I didn't mention before that I'm gonna mention right now is Beckett will not ship them back international priority no matter how much you ask. Um, how much you ask. I've, I, I've gotten contact with my regional sales rep numerous times. I've complained. I've argued. They will only ship it back international economy, which is the, the lesser service. So economy, I believe, is three to five days, although in my experience, it's always, it's always like two days, whereas priority is overnight. So just keep that in mind. Your cards will ship back if you do it via FedEx. They will ship back um, FedEx international economy postage so I put yeah I'd like them shipped back my business address listed below and then I got a, I've gone ahead and put my FedEx account number so if you have a FedEx account number you put it here I also put to note if this does not work then please ship to my home address listed below obviously I've taken out my home address for the purposes of this video but I would put it here normally okay then I've got my credit card info and I've got the expiry date of the credit card I make sure I also do put it on the sheet itself I put the credit card info just because um, Becca does note that if your uh, if they cannot process your payment, then it will slow down the time in which they grade your cards. So they will not grade your cards until payment has been processed. So I just try to repeat the, uh, my credit card info a few times there. Finally, I put my Beckett website username, and just below there you can see it. I also put my email. Pretty straightforward. This is standard forms. Nothing too crazy on it. I just find it easier than filling out this. Uh, than hand hand typing um, Beckett's form, so that's just something that's just something I do there. So feel free to use this. I can't take credit for this. I actually had a good friend of mine show me that this is what they do. So and I just kind of emulated it. So I thank them very much for doing that. Uh, so now moving on, what we're gonna do is once you actually submit your cards to Beckett and Beckett has received your cards, and we're gonna get into we're gonna get into um, how Beckett receives your cards, or sorry, how we're going to mail our cards to Beckett, but first, what Beckett does is once they receive your order, they will send you uh, two emails. The first email being that we're going to get on screen right now, and the first email says, 
your grading process has begun. Basically, Beckett is letting you know that they have received your card. So however many cards you sent, they'll tell you, you know, dear MTG Foil Guy, thank you for submitting your cards to Beckett Grading Services. We're sending this email to allow you to obtain more information about your order. Um, basically, this is just a red tape email. It's pretty standard. Um, it, just sell, it just tells you what's going on. Main thing to note on here is, let me take my mouse. You will also receive an email when your order is graded and shipped, which will provide you information about your cards and a shipping tracking number. We hope that you will be pleased with our product and service. So let's go ahead and let's say that we, we've gone ahead, we, we've gone, we submitted our cards to Beckett, Beckett has received our cards, now Beckett has gone ahead and graded our cards. Once they've done that, they will send you that second email that we are just talking about, and it looks a little something like this. So here, here's an old one I have, where it tells me the serial number of my card, it tells me the set, Magic the Gathering Alpha, in this particular case it's a Mox Jet I submitted, it received a final grade of 8.5. Auto grade and GSA cert, those don't apply because my card wasn't signed. You can see I also had a Mox Emerald 8.5, a Ruby 9, a Pearl 8.5, and Ancestral Recall Beta 8.5. So I was pretty pleased with that. It also says here you can click here to go ahead and view your order details. I've actually got those order details right here. And again, as being part of logged in, you can actually go into under grading. You can go to my grading orders, and this is where you can pull this tab up, okay? Um, also, too, sorry, I'll just show you that again. Grading. Uh, here we can also see the population report that we looked at. And here's how you can get to your Beckett graded registry, which we also looked at earlier in the video. So sorry for not showing you that sooner. But again, just under the grading tab here on any of the screens, including the main web page itself, you'll see this grading tab and you can go ahead and look up some stuff there. Okay. So now we're going on this page here. As you can see, I originally did, there's my job ID. Um, that's obviously back at internal use in case I have a discrepancy they can reference it in this particular case I sent in five cards they graded five cards they shipped them out on December 30th 2014 they provided me with my tracking number they shipped via Global Express Mail USPS um, and it just tells me they received the cards on December 23rd December 23rd 2014 so I again I did the two-day grading service but with holidays and all that it took them took them six days they do um, Christmas Eve, Christmas, and Boxing Day are considered holidays. If you want to know the holiday schedule, go on the website, and they'll tell you which days they have off for holidays. Um, so it's pretty cool. Your thing will look like this. If you're doing the regrade game, if it did not receive a bump, it will have final grade NA here. So that will say NA. Also, something to note, too, is when you go back and you get the first email from Beckett that says your grading order process has begun, Instead of having graded CL numbers and, and stuff here, it will just say um, number of cards received, uh, number of cards received five, and then it will have here, yeah, number of cards graded zero, and I believe this part down here is still blank, but don't quote me on that. It may have it filled in, it just won't have the final grades filled in, okay? So it's important to note that you can go, once they've received your cards and they sent you that email, you can actually go and pull this up. It just won't have any grades and won't have a tracking number, etc. So now we've gone ahead and done all that. We're going to get into, let's see, let me pull up my little Word document here, make sure I get everything. We're going to go ahead and show you how I package the cards. So, let's bring this down here. There we go. So let's get back to our couple little guys here. I've got some ungraded, I've got a Psychic Venom and a Prodigal Sorcerer. And let's say I want to get these graded, but I don't know how to send them in and I don't know how to take care of them. So if you go on the Beckett website itself, it recommends that you send them in these bad boys right here. They look just like this. Card Saver 1, Card Savers 2s, or in this particular case, I have the Ultra Pro equivalent of them. They're pretty straightforward. They're semi-rigid, so they actually like bend pretty easily, something I'm not a fan of at all. But this is how Beckett recommends you send it to them. I've got a couple examples here of some cards already in them. And you can see them on screen there. So we got Fire Breathing. What are the other two? I got Stream of Life and Wall of Wood. So this is how Beckett recommends you send them to them. Note, too, that I also have them in penny sleeves as well. Um, Beckett says that it's fine. You can send them in penny sleeves in the Card Saver ones or, like I said, in this case, the Ultra Pro equivalents. So this is how Beckett wants you to send it to them. Something you can also do is you can also send it in just your regular old top loaders 
that is fine. Again, I have it in a penny sleeve inside the top loader. This is not preferred by Beckett, but it's a non-issue. So just your regular, obviously I still got a brand new package right here. Just your regular Ultra Pros, nothing fancy, but Beckett will accept those as well. So again, just really quick, your two ways to send them. You can either do the card savers or you can do the Ultra Pro. Um, if I'm doing if I'm doing the regrading game, let me see here. I will send them in these extra sleeves, Ultra Pro, uh, semi rigid for graded submission, easy grade sleeves. So I will send them in these. And again, let me see if I have an example here of something that's sleeved up. Okay. Here's my ancestral recall, for example, and it's just sitting in one of these sleeves. I actually just keep them sleeved all the time in these. Um, this was, I think this packet of 100 was like two bucks or something, Canadian $2. So it just helps keep the cases kind of nice. As you can see, it's just inside that little case. Open it up. Take the card out. So those are your options for submitting them, but let's go ahead and get into packaging and how we actually go about packaging the cards. So I've got a couple photos here. This is a recent order I did for a gentleman who per recently uh, purchased some cards from me. So the first thing I do is I bubble wrap my cards. Pretty straightforward, nothing fancy there, just good old fashioned bubble wrap. Um, if I'm doing the, where did I put it? I'm doing the top loaders here. I'll usually do top loader, top loader. So three top loaders in total just for that extra protection. Not saying you do that. I'm just saying that's something I do, but I'm also a package freak when it comes to submitting my cards. So now that we have them bubble wrapped, we're going to go ahead and put them in a bubble wrap envelope. Again, pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory, but that's what I do. After the bubble wrap envelope, I then go ahead and put them in a cardboard box. Now, the cardboard box is the thing I want to stress to you the most. This to me is actually the most important part of the packing process, especially if you ship it like FedEx or something. What they'll, what they'll do is you can put Fragile, you can put whatever on it. At the end of the day, they're still going to pile stuff on top of your, uh, your box. So I like, I like the box just because um, it's harder to squish down, especially if you're sending the cases too. It's a lot harder for them to squish the package down if it's inside the box. So if you only do one of my things here today, please do the cardboard box. To me, that's actually the most important thing to ship in it in this particular case this is just a cardboard box that was something i bought it wasn't even it wasn't even anything crazy it was just an extra box i had laying around um i've got in the habit of saving supplies like this because i know i do a lot of mailing so anytime um i get a box like this i just put it aside until it comes time to mail finally what i do after that is if i have any loose space or loose area in the box i just fill it up in this particular case it's just tissue paper nothing fancy if you got the little uh scrunchy dudes put those in but I didn't have them so I just used tissue paper and I just pack it down fill in all the loose crevices so there's nowhere for my cards to move around in this is how I ship if you have something that works for you by all means use it I'm just showing you what I do when it comes to shipping now we got ahead and shipped our cards we're nearing the end of our video the last thing we typically do is we go to the post office and we mail our cards out to BGS so pretty straightforward the address you're gonna mail to is and you can find it all over the place it's not that hard to find right here it's even on the form itself um let's turn around so i can read it beckett grading services now make sure you address it to beckett grading services so to put beckett grading services at 4635 McEwen drive uh i probably butchered that dallas texas 75244 also too if you're like me and your fedex they always ask for the phone number give them that bad boy right there 972 Four four eight nine one eight eight. So again, the information's right there. I usually take a blank one of these with me to um, the FedEx post office, and I just point to that address because it's a lot easier than me trying to regurgitate it or for me trying to spell it. If you have your phone, just give me your phone. A couple things I'll ask you when you are at the post office. Now I only mail my cards FedEx, but I imagine the questions will be the same no matter where you go. So first thing they're gonna ask you is who's it going to? We just covered that. Beck and Grading Services. There's the address. There's the phone number. Um, FedEx, they will ask you for the phone number too. So then from, obviously, uh, these cards are coming from me. So I put my address, my name, my address, and I put my phone number. Um, 
Item for, uh, important too, if you're shipping FedEx back to your business address, I always put my home address here no matter what. I don't put my FedEx, or I don't put my um, business address here. I only put my business address on the uh, Excel form and the FedEx form. So uh, that's something I do here. I put my home address. Then they're going to ask you, what's inside your package? What are you declaring for value? Because remember, this is going through customs. So for me, I declare a Magic the Gathering trading cards. They're going to ask you the country of origin. For me, because mine, in my, mine are from Belgium. Or sorry, because mine are from Beta. Uh, they, they come from Belgium. Most of the time, if you're submitting newer stuff or whatever, it's going to come from the States. So you just put United States. Um, is it easier just to say United States even for the Beta stuff? Yeah, of course. But that's not accurate. And for the purposes of this video, we're going to do things proper. And we're going to do things the right way. So... Um, for me, it's the, my declaration is from Belgium. Honestly, to be to be real clear with you guys, I, I've declared both, and I haven't had an issue either way. So I just go ahead and declare Belgium because that's what it actually is. So now that we did our item country of origin, uh, quantity. I don't know how many cards do you have inside. That's pretty straightforward. Then the next question, and this is probably the most important question they're going to ask you, and the reason why I'm even covering this topic at all, they're going to ask you, is it a sale or is it a gift? Now watch you sit there and think about it for a second. Is this a sale or is this a gift? Because you know what the answer is? Neither. Okay? Now this is why I wanted to touch base on this part of the video. And again, if you only take a couple things away from this video, take this part away. Beckett is performing a service on our card. They're either they're either regrading or recasing, or they're just flat out casing and assigning a numerical grade. That is a service. Ownership of the card is not changing hands. We are still the owners of the card. They are performing a service, and then once they are done performing the service, they will return the cards to us. Therefore, it's really, really important you stress this to your, to your uh, postmaster or people at FedEx or whoever, that this is returned goods. Okay, I'm going to repeat that one more time. Returned goods. Um, at which point they will ask you for the value of the service that they're performing. Well, you just give them the number you calculated on the front of your form here based on the services that you chose. So again, just to recap that, returned goods. Um, finally, for me, since I ship via FedEx, I don't do insurance. We kind of talk, talk, uh, talked about the return insurance a little bit earlier. That's just a decision I make for myself because it's, it's expensive. I cannot recommend what you do for insurance. You need to decide what's best for you. But as for myself personally, I do no insurance. And then I ship at FedEx International Priority, so it arrives next day by 10.30 a.m. So my cards just get there safe and sound. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, like I said, we went over how to sign up on the Beckett website. We went over some of the things you can do once you're signed up on the website. We went over the grading form. We went over how to package your cards, how Beckett wants you to submit the cards to them. Uh, and then we'll, finally we went over how to... Uh, finally, we went over how to um, actually package your cards to go to uh, Beckett. Um, now we just sit back, relax. Hopefully, you guys get some good grades. You're happy with your results and your cards make it back safely to you. This has been MTG Foil Guy showing you a video on how I do my BGS Beckett submissions. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much, guys.